Yo, Elliot. My question is, what do I do when everything is crumbling down, when everything is breaking down, when nothing's going my way, when I feel like the world is upside down in my head? Have you ever heard me say, be grateful in adversity and be generous in prosperity? This is a way to live our lives. So when things are, you say crumbling down, let's go the opposite way. When things are building up, when things are building up, up when things are going great when things are going your way when the world is all ordered right the exact opposite we have a tendency to do what fall into sin the same way that when things are crumbling down things are breaking down things are not going your way and your world is upside down you fall into sin both ways both extremes can lead us to either pride or depression right pride or or what is the word for feeling sorry for yourself, right? F pride or apathy, right? Sadness, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? Both extremes will lead you to the wrong place. And that's why the advice that when things are going your way, if you want to have, a, if you want to live with equanimity, you want to live with grace, you want to live the right way, when things are going well, that's when you're generous, right? And so, there's there's action and reaction there's actions and its consequences there is action and if you will there's karma associated with our action what you reap is what you'll sow so when things are going good when things are going well when things are going your way share a little bit more give a little bit more do a little bit more charity right like when you know i'm making money i'm giving i give money to charity right be grateful or I'm sorry, be generous in your prosperity. And what does that do? It keeps you humble. It reminds you that I didn't do this. Things are going good. And so I give back. But on the other end of the spectrum, when th the saying goes, when you're faced with adversity, be grateful, right? So you say things are crumbling down. Things are breaking down. They're not going my way. Everything's upside down. Be grateful for what you do have. The fastest way, and this is an Abraham Hicks thing, and you know, she's a new ager, but I like her stuff. And she says, you, gotta, you have to do gratitude rants. He says, when things start pulling you down, when things aren't going the right way, what you're going to end up doing is have resistance, right? Right now, you're in resistance. And when you have resistance, you, what you resist persists. You're, 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 you're fighting with it. Remember I said before, you can't fight with Satan because he's always going to win. And so the best thing to do is to turn away. You don't fight with Satan. You turn away from Satan. Well, right now, things are crumbling down and you're trying to fight against it. You're resisting against it. And the best way to resolve resistance, the best way to melt resistance is with gratitude. Start looking at the things that are good in your life. Did you have food today? Do you have clothes on your back? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have clean water, clean air? Can you run, jump, walk, breathe, climb, work, right? Does somebody love you? Is there somebody that loves you in your life? At least one person? Is there somebody that you love? Is there something good in your life? What is good in your life? And start taking your focus away from the negativity and turning it towards the positivity. Does that mean that the negative things are going to go away? No. I don't want you to believe that, oh, Elliot's saying positive thinking is going to change my life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what you focus on is what's going to grow. And if you focus on negative, you're going to get more negative. But if you focus on the positive, you focus on what you're grateful for, the negative, and it's all perspective, right? It's not that the negative goes away. It's that it's diminished in your mind. One of the greatest things I like to do is to read the lives of the saints. And there isn't a single saint that hasn't suffered, right? I think about Padre Pio. Look up Padre Pio. Padre Pio, from the day he was born, he, he was a kid that had all kinds of problems. He was too small. He was too frail. He was a weakling. But he went on to be one of the greatest saints of all time because what? Because he turned his adversity into gratitude. He saw his suffering as redemptive. He saw his suffering as a grace. And in fact, if God is as I believe he is, he's going to test those he loves most because he wants to see you overcome. Just like a strength coach, right? Like, so for example, I'm training my daughters in the gym right now, right? I don't really train people in the gym anymore. I'm training my kids, my son and my daughters.
If I'm a bad coach, I'm going to give them only easy exercises. I'm not going to challenge them. I'm going to let them do the things that they like to do, do the things that they're, that's easy for them to do, and I'm going to keep them right below their threshold of challenge. But as a good coach, as a good father, as someone that wants to see them grow up, get stronger, and, 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 and evolve in their fitness, I have to incrementally give them harder things. I can't give them the same easy workout from a month ago today. I got to give them a harder workout. But it's because I know that that tough workout, those hard times, strengthen them. Right? That's why they say hard times create strong men. Why? Why do hard times create strong men? Bro, you're going through a hard time right now. You know what that means? It's going to create strong men. Either that or you break down. It's one of two ways. You either completely break down. And you're fit for the fire as a result, right? God has no use for you. Or you build up. You grow stronger. Hard times create strong men if men decide to step up to the challenge. Right? Nothing's worse than easy times. Easy times are the most insidiously dangerous times in our lives. Because that's when we turned our back on the Lord. That's when we start growing pride. That's when we get fat and, eat and lazy. You got to stay on your toes, bro. So if anything, be really be grateful. Be grateful not just for the good things in your life that you can do a gratitude rant on, but look at those negative things and recognize, look, they're breaking down. You know what happens after a breakdown? A buildup. Nothing in nature is built until there's a breakdown. What do I mean? I'm looking at these trees right now. For this tree to be here outside my window, the seed had to break down. The seed no longer exists. The seed had to die so that the tree could grow. And as that tree grows and it leaves fall off and the leaves go into the ground around it, those leaves, what, they, what do the leaves do? They disintegrate. They break down. And what happens? They go into the soil. And those dead leaves then become what? The nourishing soil that further facilitates the growth of that tree. You need death for there to be life. You need breakdown for there to be built up. You need darkness in order to recognize the light. Right? And so this is what you're going through right now. It's just a part of the cycle of life. It's just going through the motions of life. If you go through the life and you never face any hard times, if nothing ever crumbles down or breaks down in your life, then you're living a shitty life. You're living a boring life. You're living a non-evolved life. You're not growing in your life. Call down the hard times. I've done this before. Some of my most, some of my most popular videos on YouTube, we used to make, I used to make these like, motivational videos on my strength camp channel one of them is called lift that shit or die trying go look that up elliot host lift that shit or die trying go watch that video so my strength camp channel and in that video i talk about how all the challenges in life are like a plate that's coming onto a barbell that you're about to lift right and then i say like you know the baby's crying and your wife is sick or you lost your job boom and all these things are weights and the whole point of life is to take all that and and bear it bear your cross bear it like a cross right they say that cross that jesus carried was like a thousand pounds Put that weight on my back. And in that video, I say, God, bring it. Right? And I don't know if I'm tempting the Lord, and I know you shouldn't. But I know that when the Lord challenges me, it's for my own good. And this is for your own good if you can see it that way. Perspective, brother. Perspective, brother. Perspective. See with real eyes. Real eyes. Not these fake eyes that get us caught in the minutia of things and wallowing in our feelings. That's the weak way, the effeminate way. The masculine way is stoic, strong, focused, and relentless, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.